Hello everyone, welcome back. In the previous lecture, I gave you the structure of CFA Level 1 exam. In today's video, I will be talking about certain tips that you must keep in mind as you go through your preparation for the Level 1 exam. So let's begin. The first tip that I would like to share with you is that you must prepare intelligently. I mean that you must focus on the command words in the learning outcome statements. So see what the learning outcome statement is expecting of you. Whether you have to compute, calculate or analyze something or do you have to compare, define or describe. So in case there is the use of the word compute, calculate, you must focus on the formulas in that topic. And where there is a use of the words such as define, compare, describe, then you should focus on the definitions rather than the formulas. The second tip that I have for you is that do not leave anything out. I have seen students who compare the topic weight with the number of pages in the CBOC. So, for example, if you look at uh, economics, economics has around 10% weightage in level 1, whereas the economics book is quite fat. It has around 300 pages. So, uh, anybody would feel that it is better to leave out that 10% and skip economics altogether and save the amount of time. However, this is a very wrong practice. Students who undertake this kind of practice will not pass the exam. And what I want to share with you right now is that do not focus on just passing the exam. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the knowledge. Enjoy the experience that it is giving you. Focus on learning. Focus on understanding. Don't just keep an exam focus in mind. Keep the focus of increasing your knowledge base. Study everything. Learn everything. And then only your probability of passing the exam will increase. A third tip that I would like to give you is that do not overindulge in prep material. There are a lot of uh, prep providers. There is a lot of information on Google. Do not waste time in those. Your base of preparation should be the CBOC. It should be the candidate's body of knowledge. You may use some supplementary material for uh, understanding a topic better. However, please remember that the other material is only supplementary. Your primary material is the CBOC and that is what you should concentrate on. The fourth tip for you is that you must learn the use of uh, the official calculator well. I had used Texas Instruments BA2+. Plus and uh, I had also mastered the use of that calculator. If you know the use of the calculator well, you will save a lot of time on the exam, but you cannot learn the use of the calculator on the last day. You have to understand the use right from the time you start preparing for the exam. So uh, search certain videos on Google if you do not know how to use the calculator. There is a lot of help available, but start early because it is not just the knowledge of using the calculator, but also the practice that is going to help you use the calculator better at the time of the exam. A fifth tip that I would like to share with you is that you must strategize your preparation well. I usually like to go by the order of the study sessions as provided in the CBOC. However, uh, there are a lot of people who would suggest you to start with quant first or with FRA first because those are the supposedly more important topic areas. However, I would advise against that. The one thing that you can do is to start two topics in parallel. Take a theoretical topic such as ethics or uh, economics and take another practical or numerical topic such as derivatives, equity, fixed income or uh, quant and you can study them in parallel. So if you have two topics which are totally different, one theoretical and one numerical, if you get too bored with formulas and the formulas start bombarding your mind, then you can take a break by studying something in economics or something in ethics. 
and once you have got your break you can come back to your numerical subject so this is some kind of an adjustment that you can make see what suits you best see what works out best for you and do that the sixth tip that i have for you is that don't let distractions come in your way don't let distractions hamper your preparation and why i have taken this as one of the 10 tips that i'm giving you is that you know the kind of person i am i do not boast for my focus i don't say that you know once i sit to study i can study for 10 hours at a stretch i get distracted i have a child i have a husband i have a job and i have 101 things on my mind and i am also very fond of movies music books and sometimes when i'm studying and i see a new movie release then i feel that you know i should be watching that movie and it roams around in my mind again and again so one of the uh, tips that worked for me was that at the end of my register i had kept a topic which read uh, things to do after the exam and whatever distraction came to my mind i used to just list it down at the end of the register the moment it hit my mind so for example if there's a book that i wanted to start read during the exams which was not relevant for the exam then i would you know just write the name of the book at the end of the register and say read this book and then just forget about it same way if i wanted to watch a movie i would just write watch a movie during uh, the preparation you would also see that you do not have time to socialize and actually it is not the time to socialize you should not be socializing when you are supposed to be preparing cfa is a tough exam you have to put all your concentration towards preparation so after one or two months of uh, preparation when you've not been around with your friends that will also start haunting you so keep that as a point write it at the back of your register say start socializing after the exam now uh, did i do all those 30 40 items which i had listed at the end of my register no i did not so those are really not your you know key concern areas they are just distractions so you must try and learn a way to keep them out of your head when you are preparing the seventh tip that i would like to share with you is that do practice questions as you go along so after you have completed a reading there are practice questions at the end of the reading you must attempt them before you move forward as you attempt them you must also write along with them whether you've made a guess whether you were sure about it and read the explanation of each and every question even if the question that you got right you must read the explanation because the explanation could be something different than what you had thought however i do not suggest taking a complete 3 hour exam uh, before you have completed your courseware thoroughly because uh, you know that is just wasting your uh, exam paper they are practice exams are few and you must keep them safe but don't keep them for the last day you know you must try and complete your courseware a month prior to the exam and then uh, one month prior only you should start taking the practice tests about two tests a week and that should get you through the eighth tip i would like to give you is that you must be realistic with the time that is required for preparation and the time that you are spending on each topic area So while I said that 6 months to 5 to 6 months is the time that you must devote for each level of CFA however in the beginning you know we feel that a lot of time is left and then we tend to be a little slow in our preparation and by the time we realize that we are too slow we have already run out of time so see how much time you've got split the number of readings in those time in the amount of time that you've got see for example you know that you have got 20 weeks to complete your uh, review of the entire course fair and you have got around uh, 67 readings that means in one week you must complete at least 3 readings that is the minimum so uh, it is possible that you some readings are small you may be able to cover more than 3 readings in a week but that should be the minimum guideline that you have in case you are running slow if you are keeping a track of that you will be able to tell yourself that you are slow and pick up the speed at that time so it is very important to keep an account of the time start early and finish strong 
The ninth tip that I would like to talk about is that you must study every day. There are days which may be good and there are days which may be bad. There are days on which you won't feel like studying, but still, whatever half an hour, 45 minutes you can take out, you must study. Read any topic that you want to, but don't let even a single day go by when you're not studying. Read for a little time, but you must read. And you must compensate for that bad day within that week. So if Monday was a bad day, you were able to study only for half an hour. If Tuesday was also a bad day, you were just able to study for 15 minutes. Then you must make up for that lost time on a Thursday or a Friday by studying about uh, three to four hours on one of those days so that you can compensate for one of your bad days. The tenth and last tip that I would like to share with you is that as the exam approaches uh, during the last month of the exam, please take care of yourself. That is not the time to fall sick. That is not the, the time to get hurt. So be careful. Pamper yourself. Uh, take out time to exercise. Take in some fresh air. Take out time to sit in the balcony, to go for a walk, eat well. Uh, take some time off from the office. In the last month, I would suggest if you could uh, take you know one day off every week, that would be good. It will give you time to relax. It will give you more time to prepare. If it is not possible for you to take an entire day off, then probably a couple of half days in a week. So work it out with your boss. Most of the employers do give time to the employees who are preparing for CFA. They are very sensitive towards it and it is a very esteemed program. So I'm sure they will support you. But don't expect anything unrealistic. Don't expect them to give you a complete month off. That is not practical and that is not possible. So make the best of the time available to you. Make the best out of the support given to you. Keep these 10 tips in mind as you progress towards your final day. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed talking to you today.